Teams in Mission Control Moscow are working with teams here in Mission Control Houston, the International Space Station Flight Control Room. Teams here are looking over the vehicle that is the ultimate destination of progress today. Teams in Mission Control Center here are led by Flight Director Zeb Scoville, leading the Orbit 1 teams in the early morning here Central Time. Adam Springer, the Capcom next to him, has been communicating with the crew throughout their morning. There'll be a handover here in just about an hour. And about that time, uh, teams will hand over to go over the rendezvous, or manage the rendezvous of progress that is meant to make an expedited trip to the International Space Station. Progress is currently sitting at Site 31 of the Baikonur Cosmodrome. Nearly three tons of cargo inside, precisely 5,411 pounds. This cargo is made of uh, propellant, oxygen, water, and dry cargo. All preparations so far are going according to plan. Progress is loaded with all the necessary cargo propped up on the launch pad. Should be getting a feed here shortly. Liftoff time is 7.10, 46 a.m. Central Time. That's just after midnight. That's just uh, in the evening, Baikonur time, just before sunset. Again, uh, progress is poised at Site 31, ready to take off here in just about uh, 23 minutes. That uh, expedited rendezvous will be two orbits, or just uh, a little over three hours, until it uh, reaches the International Space Station, entering into a steep inclined orbit to catch up with the orbiting laboratory circling the Earth at 17,500 miles per hour. That rendezvous time we're looking at is just about 10.35 a.m. Central Time. Greeting the Progress vehicle will be the crew of Expedition 60. There are six crew members aboard. Three of them have recently arrived just 11 days ago. Clockwise, from the top left, we have commander of the station, Alexei Ochinin of Roscosmos. We have Nick Haig of NASA, then uh, around the clock, Luca Parmitano of the European Space Agency, Alexander Skorsov of Roscosmos, Andrew Morgan of NASA, and Christina Cook of NASA. Andrew Morgan, Luca Parmitano, and Alexander Skorsov just arrived to the station 11 days ago after launching on July 20th, the 50th anniversary of the launch of, or the landing of the Apollo 11 crew on the surface of the moon. Christina Cook, Alexei Ovchunin, and Nick Haig have been on the station since March of this year. Everything's looking good for a launch on time today. Again, tracking just uh, about 21 minutes from now at 7.10 a.m. Central Time. Teams here, teams in the Mission Control Moscow, you can see here from the camera in that Mission Control Center monitoring the launch. Teams here at Mission Control just recently gave a go for launch. Everything's set from the side of the International Space Station flight control teams. Getting our first views of Site 31. Progress sitting on top of the pad there. Clam shell gantries have been retracted. You can see the umbilical still holding the vehicle up. There'll be a series of milestones until the actual launch of progress. At the five minute 30 second mark, the flight recorders will have been activated. Just four minutes prior to launch will be a nitrogen purge. And at three minutes 35 seconds to launch will drain excess, excess propellant. Tanks will pressurize, their propellant tanks will pressurize at 2 minutes 45 seconds before launch. 
and it's a rapid countdown uh, after the termination of the ground propellant feed and the switch to internal power. You can see umbilical towers there holding the progress up. Just off to the left side from this view you're seeing now. Both of them will retract. Engines will throttle up and it'll take off for an 8 minute 45 second ascent into orbit. Navigational antenna and solar array will deploy after ascent and I'll be on its way two orbits later to rendezvous with the International Space Station. The ascent of progress will be a series of milestones to take that three tons of cargo into orbit. You can see the four strap-on boosters from this angle right here. That's the first stage of the rocket will burn for one minute and 58 seconds. Those strap-on boosters will separate and the core stage will burn for another just about three minutes and 28 seconds. The fairing you see at the top holding the uh, progress inside, the clamshell fairing will separate just about the time of that ignition of the core stage. Right about at that orange area, that orange stripe in the middle of the rocket, that'll be uh, a hot fire stage. The third stage will ignite while the core stage is still burning its last few seconds and ignite for another four minutes and two seconds. After that progress, 73 and 5,400 pounds of cargo inside will be successfully in orbit. Again, those solar arrays will deploy to draw power. And it'll make its way to the International Space Station. Progress is set to uh, dock to the Piers docking compartment. Just two days ago, the Progress 72 undocked from that very same compartment burning up in the atmosphere uh, a few hours later with trash. It's a busy time in space. You can see a bunch of the vehicles attached to the International Space Station. Progress 73 will go over to the right there of the MS-12 from this view. That's the Piers docking compartment. SpaceX's Dragon on the CRS-18 mission just arrived at the station recently, just last Saturday, with just over 5,000 pounds of cargo. The Northrop Grumman Cygnus will depart shortly after Progress 73's arrival, scheduled to depart the station on August 6th. It'll depart with uh, more payloads and some trash that it'll spend an extended stay in orbit before it disposes of that trash to conduct a secondary mission. Soyuz MS-13 is where the crew, uh, most recent crew of Expedition 60 arrived, docking to the aft end of the service module, bringing those three crew members, Drew Morgan, Alexander Svortsov, and Luca Parmitano to the International Space Station. Now just 16 minutes to launch, everything going according to plan so far.
on the same day that uh, Progress 72 undocked, just two days ago. Progress 73 minutes away to Site 31. Here it is on the rail being uh, pulled from its processing center over to Site 31. Transported horizontally, then propped up vertically. Here it is propped up in its uh, vertical position, those clamshell towers on the side, retracted at the time. The umbilical towers you see off in the distance have been uh, moved in closer to the vehicle. They will retract shortly before launch, just a few seconds really. There's two umbilical towers. First will be retracted just about the 30, 35 second mark. And then that last one about uh, 12 to 15 seconds. There the umbilical towers are right now. We're in the evening time of uh, Baikonur, though an early morning here in Houston. Launch conditions are looking good for progress. Everything tracking for an on-time launch at 7.10 a.m. Central Time. Over at the Baikonur Cosmodrome, just about 98 degrees Fahrenheit, a hot summer day there, 37 centigrade. Now, to make a two-orbit rendezvous, the profile for when the Progress launches is just a little bit different. The International Space Station, at the time of launch, is scheduled to be just about 254 statue miles over southwest Kazakhstan. The space Station will be uh, 315 miles behind Progress. Space Station will uh, leapfrog over Progress. And uh, just about the time progress is inserted into orbit, station will be 254 statue miles over southern Russia, just north of the border of Mongolia. At that time, the space station will be just over 1,000 miles ahead of the progress. Progress will be inserted into a steep inclination into orbit. That'll help it to go once it's inserted into orbit to steeply climb over the course of two orbits around the Earth, or just a little over three hours, and finally catch up with the International Space Station. You can see some of the ducting of conditioned air. It's normal for a launch in preparation. Those four strap-on boosters, again, will be the first stage that'll ignite first just prior to launch and ramp up up to lip, lift off those four strap on boosters firing for just about 1 minute and 58 seconds as the Soyuz arcs out over the northeast from Baikonur on a trajectory designed to catch up to the space station Now just a little under 10 minutes away from launch. At this point, there'll be a series of incremental milestones to get us to that point of liftoff. 
at just about the 10 minute mark, the gyros, the gyros should be in flight readiness and the, and the recorders will have been activated. This is part of those pre-launch operations, which will be complete at just about the seven minute mark. At six minutes before launch, the launch countdown operations will be switched to automatic and the vehicle will be ready for launch. Of course, a series of milestones after that, including the nitrogen purge and uh, the draining of propellant just before the tank pressurization. Everything looking still on track for that launch just nine minutes from now. Just eight minutes to launch at this point. Again, looking for that on-time launch at uh, 7.10 a.m. Central Time, precisely 7.10 and 46 seconds. Confirmed from the visiting vehicle office here in Mission Control Houston that the launch countdown operations have been switched to automatic. Just about seven minutes from launch, the International Space Station. Right now about 260 statute miles right over the Red Sea, crossing over Saudi Arabia. Again, at about the time of launch, the space station is scheduled to be on southern, just over southern Kazakhstan, essentially behind progress at the time of launch. But we'll leapfrog over progress as part of the rendezvous prio profile to meet that two orbits or just over three hours until the rendezvous to the International Space Station's Piers docking compartment. Just under six minutes from launch, the launch key, the physical key, has been inserted into the launch bunker. Transitions the launch sequence into automatic mode. Five minutes to launch, that launch key again has been inserted a minute ago, putting the launch sequence into automatic mode. Space station now currently flying 260 statue miles over Iraq.
just four minutes from launch. The next milestone will be when the fuel lines and other elements of the rocket engines are purged with nitrogen to fireproof them by removing vapors of fuel and oxidizer. Two minutes, 45 seconds to launch. This time the booster tank would be being pressurized for launch and optimize the, fuel f the flow of fuel and helps add to um, structural support for the rocket. International Space Station currently flying 260 statue miles over the Caspian Sea. One minute, 30 seconds to launch. At this point, the ground propellant feed would now have been terminated. Space station currently flying over Turkmenistan, about to cross over Uzbekistan, and then the southern border of Kazakhstan, the position of the ISS at the time of launch. One minute to go, the Soyuz will be switching to internal power. Soyuz booster on top is the progress vehicle. There's that first umbilical tower we're tracking. Second umbilical tower. Ignition has been started. Engines throttling up and lift off. We have lift off of the Progress. Progress 73 on its way in the fast lane to the International Space Station. Everything looking good so far. Those four strap on boosters providing the initial lift of the vehicle will burn for 1 minute 58 seconds.
Still getting some great views on this clear day in Baikonur. Everything looking good so far during this first stage ascent. Just about 30 more seconds of this stage. At this point, the vehicle is traveling well over a thousand miles an hour. Confirmed booster separation. Now switching to animation, that core stage will burn for another 3 minutes 28 seconds. Good reports of the uh, second stage so far. This core stage again will burn until about the 4 minute 48 second mark into flight. Confirmation of launch shroud jettison, now revealing the Progress 73 underneath. Three minutes, 30 seconds into the flight. Everything's still looking good. This stage will burn for a little more than one more minute. Third stage will ignite a little bit before the end of the uh, core stage is burning. A hot fire technique that will happen at the lattice structure right at that orange stripe in the middle of the rocket. Still looking good, about 30 more seconds of this core stage. Good second stage separation and third stage ignition. Skirt has been jettisoned. Good reports from the third stage so far. Again, this stage burns for four minutes, two seconds. Starting to get some views from that third stage. You can see this is actually from the view of the progress. Those solar arrays at the forward end of the screen. Five minutes, 50 seconds into launch. Everything looking good so far.
six minutes into the flight, again, this third stage will burn until eight minutes, 45 seconds. Third stage will cut off and separate from the vehicle into an orbit. Seven minutes into the flight, everything's still looking good for this third stage, again burning until the eight minutes, 45 second mark into the flight. Seven minutes, 45 seconds into the flight. Just about one more minute of this stage. You'll see that third engine cut off and the separation of that third stage from the, Swiss, from the progress vehicle. A few more seconds, we'll see that third stage separate. And we have good third stage separation. Third stage shutdown and separation from the vehicle. And we have good confirmation of the solar array deployment. And the antennas have deployed as well. Progress successfully in orbit, catching up to the International Space Space Station just behind, which has leapfrogged it. Space Station 261 statute miles just at the border of uh, northern Mongolia and southern Russia, about to cross over the western border of the northern part of China. A great ascent of Progress 73 lifting off on time. Everything about the ascent went perfectly. Progress in orbit right now. It'll just circle the Earth two times before it meets up with the International Space Station. We will be back on the air shortly. Again, that rendezvous happening in just a little over three hours. We'll go on the air a little bit before that. That rendezvous time, everything going according to the plan so far. We're looking at 10.35 a.m. Central Time for that rendezvous. 
Stay tuned for our coverage of the rendezvous and docking of Progress 73 to the Piers docking compartment on the expedited two-orbit fast-track lane to the International Space Station. We're going to take a short break until that time of rendezvous and let the flight controllers handle here in, uh, from the balcony camera of Mission Control Moscow over in Koryov. Let them handle the flight of uh, progress. And the flight controllers here in Mission Control Houston watch over the International Space Station soon to meet just a little over three hours from now. Until then, this is Mission Control Houston.